Hello everyone, my name is Ole Kagan and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for LA County Library and I welcome you to Discovering Podcasts. And our presenter today is Lawrence Mack. Lawrence is a MAKEMO or Maker Mobile Librarian. He, that means he drives a colorful van all over LA County doing STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math events for folks of all ages, five and up to 99 and above. So at any given day, you might find him at a senior center, a school, a library, a park, and beyond. And beyond could also mean virtually, like we hear here with you today. And so with that, I turn the stage over to Lawrence Mack. Lawrence, the stage is yours. All right, thank you so much for the introduction, Oleg. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the program. Uh, bear with me here while I share my uh, screen and we will get started. All right, so let's go ahead. share that. Okay, so um, welcome to Discovering Podcasts. Now in this program, we're going to cover um, kind of the basics of podcasts, including what they are, um, how you can access them, uh, some of their popular platforms, and also how you can start your own podcast. Um, <clears throat> and along with some additional resources. Again, if you have any questions during the program, please share them with us um, in the Q&A, um, and we will attempt to address them all at the end after um, the presentation during our Q&A session. For more library news, including upcoming programs, resources, and events, you can check out our website at lacountylibrary.org, and we're also on social media. Uh, using the handle at LA County Library, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more at LA County Library. Now, let's begin. Okay, so here's our description for today's virtual program. Explore the expansive world of podcasts, including varied formats and listening platforms like Amazon Music, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Then learn about how you can start your own podcast. Okay, so you might be wondering, what exactly is a podcast? Well, a generally accepted definition of a podcast is a digital audio file of speech, music, or broadcast material that's made available on the internet on the internet for downloading to a computer or portable media player, new installments of which can be received by subscribers automatically. It's a pretty wordy description, but it's basically like a radio show that you can download and listen to with episodes released regularly. Fun fact, the pod from the word podcast actually comes from iPod on the MP3 player from Apple on which people generally loaded their podcasts to listen to back in the day, while the cast comes from broadcast. But now in the age of fast LTE and 5G mobile internet, we can easily stream podcasts straight from our smartphones anytime we want without needing to download or take up space on our devices. Some typical characteristics of a podcast include it being widely accessible and episodes being free or low cost to download and listen to while being regularly updated with new content whether that's daily, weekly, or monthly, depending on the podcast. It's also part of why podcasts are so appealing. There's a very low barrier to entry for both creation and consumption. All right, so how did podcasts develop? Well, the first true podcast is called IT Conversations, and that started in 2003. So IT Conversations was a podcast that focused on tech-related topics. It was one of the longest running podcasts out there um, with an episode released almost every day until it concluded in 2012. The term podcast was first coined by a journalist in 2004 and has remained the default term for podcasts ever since. 
Now, initially, RSS feeds were, and still are, a popular way of distributing and receiving new podcast episodes. Now, RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication, and it's represented by the icon that you can see on the right-hand side. It's a data format that allows users to subscribe to and easily receive updates from a website, such as blog posts, news updates, or podcasts. Well, it's been discontinued on, uh, on a lot of sites, it's still available on the Google podcast platform, and therefore it's still a pretty popular way of receiving new podcast episodes. Then in 2005, Apple adds podcasts to iTunes. So that was when you'd start downloading that, uh, those episodes to your iPod player. And then in turn, Podcatcher software uh, goes mainstream. Uh, with Google, Spotify, and Amazon all boasting their own podcast uh, and music platforms. And podcasts were further popularized uh, from genres like comedy. You've got comedians like Ricky Gervais and Adam Carolla um, having their own podcasts, and also true crime, which is also a massively popular uh, genre of podcasts. Uh, for example, the popular true crime podcast, Serial. All right, so um, here's some interesting podcast stats. Uh, now, in 2023, it's estimated that 90 million Americans listen to podcasts weekly. Um, that's a pretty big chunk of the country. Uh, and 91% of Americans own a smartphone and so have immediate access to podcasts. Because as long as you have a smartphone and you have a data plan, uh, you know, immediately start listening to podcasts. Uh, to the free podcasts out there. 73% of people listen to podcasts on their phone compared with 13% listening on their laptop or PC. So again, the smartphone is the most popular uh, way to listen to a podcast, um, especially uh, for my own experience, I just um, download the episodes and, uh, and hook them up to my car's Bluetooth while I'm driving. So it's, it's a good way to consume content uh, while on the road. Um, and then also 80% of listeners listen to most or all of a podcast episode they start. So that means, you know, podcast episodes must be doing something right for listeners to stick through the whole program um, and uh, consume all of the content. And here are some popular podcast genres. Uh, as you can see, the top three uh, genres of podcasts include comedy, include news, and also true crime. Um, and then there's also uh, popular genres like sports, health and fitness, uh, religion, and politics as well. But there are a lot of different uh, podcasting genres out there. And if you like listening to, uh, if you like listening to content, there's a good chance that you'll find something that fits your niche uh, in the podcasting world. Now, there are several different types of podcasting formats. So a normal podcast uh, is, just an, is just basically a radio show. Um, it's, you know, somebody talking about a certain topic. They might have guest, um, guest speakers on their podcast but it's all audio. Um, it's all an auditory experience. However, there are different types of podcasts out there. So there are enhanced podcasts or also called slidecasts. And uh, these combine audio with sort of a slideshow presentation, kind of like what I have right here. So for example, if this were made available, uh, let's say on YouTube or in a downloadable format, um, then this could, uh, this program could conceivably be considered an enhanced podcast. Now, there's also fiction podcasts, and these are sort of like, uh, like those radio serial dramas. They deliver a fictional story, uh, usually over multiple episodes or even seasons, and they have you know, voice actors, they have sound effects, and also music included to enhance the storytelling experience. There's also podcast novels. 
uh, which are basically like audiobooks, but recorded into episodes that are delivered regularly. So it's like chapters of an audiobook. There's also video podcasts, uh, which basically contain video content. Um, some a lot of times it's um, it's video content of the podcasters uh, speaking along with maybe some graphics as well. And then there's also the live podcast, uh, which is recorded in front of a live audience. Um, so so you get the audience feedback and reactions um, from the content that the podcaster is saying. Now, here are some examples of popular podcasts. Uh, so these are the United States top 50 most listened to podcasts uh, from the end of 2022. Um, so the first one is uh, the Joe Rogan Experience, which is available exclusively on Spotify. And you've probably heard of it by now, if only in passing on the news, as it sometimes has uh, sensational or controversial topics in addition to guests such as well-known politicians, leaders of industry, and actors and musicians. Um, the second is Crime Junkie, which is a true crime podcast. And third is The Daily, which is a news podcast from the New York Times. So as you can see, this chart does correlate with the popular podcast genres uh, chart that I showed you earlier. Uh, as you can see, comedy is well represented with um, People like Joe Rogan um, with the Smart List and Conan O'Brien. Um, the news is well represented with uh, the New York Times and also NBC News. And also tr true crime is well represented as well with Crime Junkie, uh, Morbid, and also My Favorite Murder. So now that you know a bit about podcasts and what some of the more popular genres and shows are, to move on to popular podcasting platforms. Uh, so we'll cover kind of Apple Podcasts and iTunes. We'll cover Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, and some more. All right, first on the list is Apple Podcasts. And Apple Podcasts was first uh, included with iTunes in 2005. So that was when iTunes introduced um, the ability to, to download and sync podcasts to your Mac and your iPod. And the standalone Apple Podcasts app was introduced in 2012. So Apple Podcasts features more than 2 million shows. Um, a cool feature is that you can search for a show based on content within its transcript, uh, within the show's audio transcript. And it can also sync with, uh, sync with Siri or Alexa or other types of um, smart assistants for voice control. And it's pre-installed on all Apple devices. So if you have an Apple device, you probably have Apple Podcasts uh, on your device already. Next, there's Google Podcasts. So this uh, standalone podcasting player was released in 2018. And its cool feature is that it allows users to add unlisted podcasts um, by entering the RSS feed manually. So in addition to the podcasts that Google Podcasts already has, uh, if you find a podcast that isn't listed, it has the very nice ability to customize um, your feed by entering the RSS feed into Google Podcasts. And again, it's pre-installed on all Android devices. So if you have an Android device, chances are uh, it is already installed and waiting for use on your device. And Google Podcasts is available for Android devices. It's available as an app on iOS devices. And also uh, you can just listen to Google Podcasts on any web browser. Uh, so it's a very versatile platform uh, for listening to podcasts as well. Now these two, Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts are uh, basically free um, apps that uh, anybody can use. Um, however, now we get to Spotify. So Spotify uh, is a music streaming service that also has podcasts. And that's reflected in the app interface, which is still a bit more tailored towards uh, music 
than it is for podcasts. Now, Spotify, uh, there is a basic free ad supported base service, um, which is fine and all for listening to, um, to the free music and podcasts that are available. However, there's also a subscription based tier that removes ads and unlocks features, including uh, being able to listen offline, uh, downloading episodes, and also rewinding episodes. And a subscription also unlocks some of their premium podcasts as well. Like for example, that, that Joe Rogan podcast is um, locked behind the paywall. Now, Spotify also has more than 3 million shows, and they also have a lot of popular exclusive podcasts like um, the one I just mentioned. Uh, and it's also widely available uh, on Apple devices, on Windows devices, and on Android devices. All right, uh, so next we get to Amazon Music and Audible. So Amazon, not to be outdone by Apple and Google and Spotify, they also added um, podcasts to their music streaming service in 2020. So it's a relatively new addition um, when compared with the other competitors and platforms in this field. However, they're also uh, following Spotify's lead by having a growing collection of Amazon original and exclusive content, including exclusive podcasts. Now, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you have basic access to Amazon Music. However, there's also an additional paid tier um, that unlocks additional content. Again, it's available on a wide variety of devices, including Apple, Windows, and Android. Now, next we get to Audible. So Audible, is a subsidiary of Amazon, and it also has a catalog of podcasts. Um, they have their own exclusive podcasts that are not on Amazon's um, Amazon's music platform and vice versa. Uh, and it also requires a separate subscription from Prime. Uh, so it's an additional uh, platform, but if it has the content, uh, if it has the content you like, a subscription is probably the only way to access uh, those podcasts. Okay, so those were some of the major podcasting platforms. Now, you might be wondering, how do you start your own podcast? How do you get into this uh, creative new field of, of podcasting? Well, it's actually quite simple to get started. So, First, there's no degrees or certifications required, and there's no fancy equipment required as well. The things that you'll need is an idea or original perspective for a podcast. You'll need a device with a microphone. You'll need a device, um, oh, you'll need a computer or um, editing software, and you'll optimally need a quiet soundproof recording area so that you can record uh, so that your recording can be clearly heard. And there's also some optional equipment as well. But for the basics, all you need to do is write, record, edit, and upload. So the first thing you want to have is an original idea or perspective. So you want to have an idea about something. You want to have an opinion about something. And then you want to ask yourself, why is your idea different? Is it unique enough? Is it something that other people would want to listen to? And most importantly, is there already a similar podcast that exists? Once you've got that sorted out, uh, you will start to plan out your content. Now, good podcast ideas should ideally align with your own interests, as you probably have a lot more say about the topic, and it's easier to maintain your enthusiasm than something that maybe you're not as familiar with or you're not as interested in. Once you have all your content planned out, you should record in an area that you're comfortable in. Uh, an ideal place would be a soundproof or quiet area that's ideal for sound clarity. Now, there's also some equipment that you'll need. 
So the first is a microphone. Uh, this can be a standalone microphone um, that, as you can see in the image, um, or it can be included with the device, um, such as a smartphone, tablet, or laptop, PC. And those um, all have built-in microphones. Next, you'll need an editing device. So after you're done with your recordings, you'll need a device that can edit the audio files. For example, you might want to edit out some uh, mistakes, or you want to edit it to be more uh, shorter, or you want to add in some sound effects. You'll need a device that can edit, uh, whether it be a computer, a tablet, or even a smartphone. Uh, these devices all have capable audio editors, uh, including editing software such as Audacity or GarageBand. And there's also optional equipment uh, that, uh, that you can use as well. So for example, mixers, uh, as you can see, also represented in this image, uh, lets you record from multiple uh, sources of sound at once um, and also play around with settings on those sounds as well. And also headphones allow you to more clearly hear your recording during editing. Now, based on the needs here, you can actually get by with scripting, recording, and editing all with a single device, even on something as simple as a smartphone or a tablet. Um, now, of course, the additional equipment, such as like mixers, headphones, and dedicated microphones can provide additional options on the recording front, but again, it's all optional. And this is a big part of why podcasts have such a low barrier to entry. You can get by with just a very simple device and uh, create something that can be uploaded to a podcasting platform. All right, so this is a recap. Uh, we learned what is a podcast. Uh, what exactly is a podcast? We learned its definition. We learned some of its popular genres, popular shows. What types of podcasts are there? Um, so you know, we learned about enhanced podcasts, fiction podcasts, video podcasts. And we also learned a bit about the different platforms that are available to use to listen to podcasts, whether it's from Google, from Apple, or Spotify. And we also learned a bit about how to start your own podcast as well. Now, um, here are some links to popular podcasting platforms. Uh, in addition to Apple Podcasts and all the other ones that I talked about, there's also um, other options like Intune Radio and Stitcher that have good podcasting content on them as well. Now, to learn more about podcasts, we have a lot of library resources uh, about the topic. So, for example, in our catalog with ebooks and more, there's a lot of podcasting uh, books, whether it's uh, physical books or audiobooks or ebooks about podcasting. We also have a lot of online learning resources, including courses from LinkedIn Learning, a sample of which is shown here, uh, that are available for you to immediately view uh, with your LA County Library card. So, for example, producing podcasts, the essential tech you need for podcasting, and producing professional audio and video podcasts. Um, that can give you a lot of ideas and also um, examples to try your hand at producing podcasts. And also for more digital, digital resources, uh, we have a lot of uh, digital literacy programming, such as this one, that can give you uh, more insight on digital literacy topics. Again, if you have any questions about anything uh, in this presentation, you're more than welcome to speak to a librarian. We're available on the phone, text, email, and instant librarian uh, on the days and times listed there. And we're also available uh, at the library. You're more than welcome to come to a library, to the reference desk, and ask a librarian in person. And we're more than happy to help you there. Now, before we get to the Q&A, I also want to show you the interfaces for Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. All right. So uh, let me share screen here. Uh, all right. So first, I want to show you Google Podcasts. Again, it's just at podcast.google.com. And this is what you see. 
All right. So you have the search bar. If you know the title of the podcast you want to search for, you can always search there. Or you can just scroll through um, the listed podcasts. There's a lot, and they are separated by the, um, by the genre. If you see a podcast you like, all you need to do is click into the podcast page, read a bit about um, read a bit about the podcast description. And then on the episodes, you just go ahead and click the play button and it'll start playing. So using Google Podcasts is easy as that. Um, if you log on to your Google account, you can also subscribe to the podcast, which will give you notifications um, when a new one comes out. Uh, but it's a very simple and easy to use interface. Okay, and that's pretty much Google Podcasts in a nutshell. Now I'll show you uh, Apple Podcasts. Let's see. All right, so this is Apple Podcasts. And again, it's available uh, if you have any Apple device at all. And the interface is very similar to Google Podcasts. So um, you can browse available podcasts. Let's see, if you see something you like, just click into it and it will open up the podcast uh, page with more information. So you can take a look at ratings. You can read more about the podcast itself. And if you like, uh, like what, what you see, you can always play the podcast. Now, there are some podcasts that are premium. So that means um, they might require a subscription. Um, but uh, the majority of podcasts are free uh, to listen to. And you, you can always save, um, save the podcast, subscribe to it. And just like Google Podcasts, you can also receive notifications when there is a new episode. Okay, so that's basically uh, Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts. Uh, and that's the presentation. Thank you so much for uh, attending. Now let's move on to the Q&A. Thanks, Lawrence. Podcasts are a big deal in my life, for sure. I listen to podcasts almost every day, and uh, I use Podcast Addict, which is a, an app for my phone, and it, I have like 80 different podcasts on there, and I don't listen to all of them at once, but I, like, I have I have them all there just so I, so I you know, and I update them every so often, and then I'll go in and, and choose the ones I'm in the mood for at the moment. So let's get to some of the questions we have here. Do we have a uh, top 10 lists for kid friendly or family friendly podcasts? Um, yeah, I'm sure that there are lists available out there. Um, so let me uh, take a look and uh, we can move on to the next question in the meantime. Okay. Uh, how far away can we listen to a podcast channel six years ago until the beginning of the first podcast episode? Actually, I can I can take it take that one if you want to look for the. So you can listen to a podcast as long as they continue to host it and push the information about the podcast episodes out on their feed. So there are some podcasts where yes, you can listen to them five, ten years the episode, very first episode, you know, like ten years ago. Um, so it's not really a time thing. It's more a matter of which podcasts and how long they keep their back episodes. So if, for instance, at some point they changed where they were hosting their podcast and didn't re-upload the old episodes, then the old episodes aren't going to be there. You're only going to listen to the ones where they upload. Or if a podcast goes away, you know, if, they, if the creator just disappears they'll and they take them down then they're going to then you're not going to be able to listen to those old episodes anymore so it's since podcasts are so are essentially homegrown not home hosted necessarily but homegrown um it really depends on the creator so the podcasts that are put out by media companies like npr etc those will tend to stick around for longer just because there's there's a company behind them i don't know if you had anything to add lawrence uh, yeah, uh, it's basically at the discretion of um, of the podcaster how long those episodes stay up. So uh, I, I noticed, Lawrence, you did post in the chat just a top children's podcast in the New York Times and also Wired. And I'm sure within the podcast apps also, there are, there are top lists for kid-friendly, family-friendly, you know, 
and there and then different genres within those so yeah i mean there are a lot of podcasts for for uh, kids and families so that yeah, shouldn't be a problem to find all right next question oh, there's actually a few questions all within one um how can we start a podcast channel i mean the name of the podcast and how does podcast make money can people donate and sponsor can we interact with the audience like a radio station so let's start with the first question now how do you start a podcast well, uh, to start a podcast, uh, first you'll need um, some content already created. Uh, once you have that content, um, you would just make an account on um, on one of those platforms that I described, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, um, and then you can start uh, posting, uh, posting your podcast up onto that channel. Um, and... Again, the name of the podcast, you, you'll need to figure something out, something creative to call your podcast, something that can capture people's attention. I recommend doing a Google search for the name that you're thinking of and podcasts, just to, see, to make sure that nobody else has used that name for a podcast and that that name doesn't already exist for something else, a movie, a TV show, et cetera, um, so that people won't get confused. Mm -hmm. And then now, how, go ahead, Lawrence. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so podcasts make money through several methods. Um, so uh, a podcast, if it's popular, can be sponsored by uh, either a company or a brand or something like that. Um, they can uh, push a product um, and also ask for donations as well. Um, so a lot of podcasters also include, um, you know, uh, a links to various donation websites uh, to get donations from supporters to help keep their channel running. Um, now, interact with the audience, like a radio station. Uh, yes, uh, some podcasters do interact with audiences. Um, for example, they can take questions from the audience um, and, also, um, and also answer those live on air as well. So that'll be more like a live stream. So they're recording the podcast as they're, and at the same time, people can watch them either on YouTube or Facebook or some other kind of platform. And then that platform will often have a chat feature. Um, and mm -hmm. so people will be able to ask questions. And while they're recording, they can interact. And then perhaps later, that podcaster will edit the episode down or remove questions or add more questions. So or add, you know, add, add fun music or something. So yeah, there's, there are differently ways. Many podcasts though are canned, so they're recorded in advance, and then they sometimes take questions by email, and so they'll they'll do it asynchronously. So they'll get a question and they'll put it into their episode um, when when they record it, but it won't necessarily be live. So it's a little bit easier, a little bit less uh, things to think about if you're not doing it live. Um, especially if you're not that experienced with media or, rec or recording media, because doing doing live questions, doing anything live, uh, requires a little bit more, a little bit more comfort in that environment, and so and also opens it up to a little bit of risk because you never know what kind of questions you're going to get and whether you're going to know the answers. Uh, that also makes it more interesting. Can I upload my podcast to any service? Uh, yeah, um, any service that accepts uh, free podcasts uh, definitely can. Yeah, I mean, just check the terms of service of the of this of whatever wherever the the host that you're going to upload to, you know, just to make sure that your the subject matter, etc., um, is in line with their terms of service. Is it possible to do if we are in different cities? Well, isn't isn't that the wonder of digital communication and, and podcasting? Yeah, I think a lot of people who record podcasts are in totally different places. You know, like if there's two hosts, they might be in totally different places. Yeah, Lawrence and, and I uh, are in different places right now. Yeah, and the nature of podcasting means that uh, viewers don't have to be live to listen to a particular podcast. So once the episode's out, uh, they can download it uh, and just listen to it at their leisure. Once we put something together, how do we get it on a platform for people to hear? Uh, well, um, so 
an, a really basic way to submit podcasts is to um, is to publish it um, using an RSS feed, and then you would submit the URL of that feed to each platform. But that is a good question, um, and I and I, I'll, I'll include some information for that in the follow up email. Let's see. Oh, I see. So this is a follow up to the question about if we are in two different cities and have two different operating systems. I have an Android, they have an Apple. Uh, do we need to get the same equipment uh, or can any of us have the recording equipment? So it doesn't matter. I mean, the the as long as you're recording audio, as long as you, you can chat. So if you can do like a Zoom chat, if you can do uh you know, Google, use Google Meets, anything, any kind of digital chat that you can record can then be, you know, you can export that, that audio file as, and then put it on a service as a plat as a podcast. You can edit it using any kind of sound editing software. I mean, there are some that are better than others for podcast editing or for editing of like a, a talk show, but the, uh, but yeah, yeah, that, that, none of that, the, different operating systems, different computers, different equipment, none of that matters as long as you can record with a reasonable amount of quality. Uh, what is needed to have people call in if possible? I think I think we already covered that, right? Yeah, all you need is uh, something to record on, uh, an mm -hmm. app that supports um, people um, interacting with each other. Let's see. Um, can you say a little bit more about RSS feeds and how to use them? Um, so it's, hmm. So uh, uh, an RSS stands for um, Real Simple Syndication. Mm -hmm. And it's a metadata file that exists on websites that tell an RSS reader um, what content is there and what content they can pull. So an RSS reader is a piece of software that will that will pull that information and then go and grab the files. So RSS feeds became popular for blogs, you know, 20 years ago. And then since then they've been they they're used for all kinds of media media that's sort of like a periodical media or like a serial media. So for instance, a magazine or a blog, anything that comes at, out at, at regular intervals or at some intervals um, is useful for an RSS feed. Some people have RSS feeds just on their website. So whenever anything on their website is uploaded, uh, they put something new on their website, it, it gets bumped into that RSS file and RSS readers can then pull that. So for podcasts, it makes a lot of sense to have an RSS feed. And usually that's built into, if you're using a service to upload your, upload means you got to put it from your computer to the internet, um, to put that, uh, to put your podcast online, those services will tend to have an RSS feed already built in. Um, though, if you're doing everything yourself, uh, building an RSS file is not extremely complicated. There are a lot of how tos to do it, about how to do it. But I, if you're not a web designer, web programmer, I don't recommend hosting your own podcast. There, there are a lot of services that are free or relatively low cost that will give you all of that stuff. The RSS feeds are really useful. Are there fees associated with broadcasting your own podcast? Mm. Really just what's um, included in your production cost. So your uh, your software, your hardware, your time. But otherwise, uh, creating a podcast uh, can be a very low cost endeavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's your, it's your time. It's the equipment that you've purchased. It's your time. And then whatever service you use to put that podcast online. Some of them are free or low, or low cost. Some of them cost more if you get more features. But yeah, that those are the pretty much the costs. The nice thing about podcasts is the barrier to entry is so low. I mean, you can even record podcasts just using a cell phone. I mean, the quality may not be amazing, but the but you're going to get your words out there. Uh, let's see. What's the link for selecting a Spotify and Amazon podcast. I think those links are in the presentation, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
um, if podcasts are free, does, does iOS or Google pay to have them in their library? Um, so for the, mostly um, no. yeah, mostly no. There are some podcasts that are behind a paywall, um, and those iOS or Google might charge a cut of that. I'm, I'm not mm. sure about that. Yeah, I think for something like the Joe Rogan podcast that has, you know, millions of listeners, then yeah, Spotify pays to have Joe Rogan in there. But for most just mom and pop kind of podcasts, by that I mean like any of us who are not celebrities or anything are going to start a podcast that's going to have one or three listeners. Um, yeah, nobody's paying to have that in their library. They're usually just pulling it via an RS the RSS feed. Um, how do people promote their podcast? That's an excellent question. Well, uh, people can promote their podcasts uh, through social media, um, uh, through promotion, through uh, sponsors, or from or just paid advertisements on websites. I think the, yeah. those are the general ways to promote. Podcasts. Yeah, or if, if the podcast is part of a is a is a certain niche as part of a particular community, maybe the best and most cost efficient way is just to be part of that community. So if you have a podcast on turtles, then you want to be you know if you're part of online forums about turtles, if you're part of the you know if it exists the 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 American Turtle Association or the uh, communities like that, those are probably the best ways to promote a podcast if it fits that specific niche, uh, then you know, those people are already going to be interested um, in your turtle podcast. If your podcast is really general purpose, like, you know, if you've got like a political podcast, you know, there are so many political podcasts. So finding your target audience is really the first step in deciding how you're going to promote. So if your target audience is easy to reach, you know, you may be able to do that organically by being a member of those communities. But otherwise, even with paid ads, you're going to have to figure out who your podcast is for. You know, it's no podcast is for everyone. So, yeah, the step one, who is it for? Then figure out how you're going to do the marketing. Can I do it totally on Zoom? So, um, yeah, you can uh, record your podcast on Zoom and just export the MP3 file, I believe. Um, yeah. 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 So the Zoom platform lets you do that. So for instance, we rec we're recording this program here and this program, the video of this program is going to be posted on YouTube. So we are going to grab the file from the back end of Zoom and that's available to, you know, to whoever has a Zoom account, um, the back end of Zoom, um, simply click on it and download it. Then I do some editing to it and then we put it up on that library's YouTube channel. So you do the very similar thing if you want to a, use a podcast which is tends to be audio only um so what you'll do is you'll just there's there's several options for what you want to download from zoom including just the audio of this program so if we wanted to put you know if we wanted to have like a digital literacy podcast we could theoretically download the mp3 file and then put it up on a platform you know editor you know it's up to you whether you want to edit it after you download it but you know it's it could be as easy as just downloading it and then putting it right onto whatever platform you're using. How do you get a sponsor? Another, another interesting question and something a lot of beginners want to know. And uh, I know Lawrence, do you want to take that one? Uh, sure. Yeah, this is a really good question. Um, so there's a couple ways to do that. Um, the first way is to just uh, reach out to sponsors directly, like basically just cold call them and, and you know, uh, pitch them your podcast. Um, another way is to partner with a hosting service. So sometimes um, hosting services will kind of uh, give you sponsors to, to, to talk about. Um, and then third, uh, if you're popular enough, sometimes the sponsors come reaching out to you to to pay you to um, to sponsor their products, um, and then there's also like sponsored directories, I believe, um, that um, that are available to peruse through as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so sponsors. So there's, you know, we're talking about the Turtle Podcast earlier. So if you are interested in getting a sponsor for your Turtle Podcast, I mean, first, you're going to need a certain amount of listeners because if you only have, you know, 10 people listening to the podcast and they're all your family members or friends, then there's no, there's not going to be a reason for somebody to pay you to promote their product to these 10 people. But once you start getting more listeners, then with your turtle podcast, you can go to, for instance, you know, turtle supply websites, you know, sponsors that might, you might, you're not going to, instead of cold calling, just, I mean, you're not going to cold call like a car wash, you know, your local car wash, not an ideal sponsor, but you know, if a, there's a national, you know, turtle supply website, you might call them and say, Hey, you know, I have this popular podcast about turtles, you know, would you like to be a sponsor? Um, for the podcast and you know whatever whatever you can you can discuss then what the rates would be or what the terms of the sponsorship would be but that would be that would make sense but you know first of all you know you build an audience unless you're a celebrity and you know if, if you are a celebrity then then you've got a you've got a leg up on most other people or maybe with podcasting you got an ear up on most other other people doing podcasts sponsors will come to you mm-hmm. yeah I'm interested in creating a serial drama podcast of a novel I wrote. Any suggestions? Um, I hire to host, how to make sure people find and listen to pitfalls. Well, that's a good idea and also a complicated question because there's you, what you're thinking about doing is not just a podcast that you'd record, for instance, by yourself you know, in your house, on your phone, you know, with just your thoughts. You're thinking about producing a whole show you know just doing essentially radio theater so i think in terms of the you know pitfalls one pitfall is that it's a lot of work producing theater even radio theater maybe especially radio theater is complicated just like you know just like producing any kind of live entertainment but when you're recording it it's also you're also going to have to do the editing and figure out you know the marketing, the promotion, all of the, you're going to have to do all of that stuff together. So you, that you've got the novel that you've written, which is an achievement. You know, you've already done a lot of work. You know, you're going to have to adapt that novel to, you know, if you, it's going to be a series to, you know, something that will work for the radio. And then also thinking, thinking about what you're going to do with that production. Are you going to have sound effects? You know, how deep is it going to be? How resonant is it going to be acoustically? Um, you know, then, you know, we talked about the, the marketing, but the, your marketing problem is I mean, your, your marketing opportunity, your, your, the marketing steps that you're going to take are the same as every other podcast. But I, I, I will say that uh, serial, you know, there's, if depending on, on what your novel, the subject of your novel, I mean, there's some, there's some dramatic novels. If, if, you, if your novel is like a mystery or a true crime, I mean, there's a lot of true crime podcasts. That's a very popular uh, genre, which is a good thing and also a bad thing because you're going to have to stand out in the crowd. Um, Lawrence, I don't know if you have anything, any, any tips or anything to add about standing out. Uh, I think you've covered uh, most of the bases, Oleg. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's a, that's a delightful undertaking if you have the time and the drive to make it happen. One more question I'm seeing. Uh, so this is this is a question from from a person that has asked a few, which is which is totally fine. You're welcome to ask as many questions as you like. I'm seeing a trend of people uh, doing their podcasts in front of a camera. Do platforms support this, or is this just extra means of them to reach a broader audience? Um, so definitely, they want to reach a broader audience, especially if they're doing live podcasts on uh, two different platforms. So you know, one of them on an audible an audio only platform like Google Podcasts, but they're also live streaming it on YouTube at the same time. That's two uh, platforms worth of audience that that they can reach at the same time. So definitely, that's uh, it's a good way to uh, boost their popularity and numbers. So yeah, I would say the the answer to these there's two, really two questions, and it's yes and yes. I mean, there are some platforms that support audio video, so like Zoom, uh, and then. To reach a broader audience, it's just like Lauren said. Yes, I mean, if you're you, if you're doing multi-platform, if you know some people want to watch you live, then or even not live, even if it's just a video, even if it's not a live video, some people want to watch it on YouTube, some people want to watch it on, you know, listen to it on Podcast Addict or Apple Apple Music. Uh, they can they can do that. You know, when you're when you have the 
you also when you're thinking about video you're adding a whole nother dimension just like when this the person who wanted to record their their serial their novel i mean you're adding a whole nother dimension to what you're doing as a podcaster or as as a media producer in the podcast I mean, you're really just focused on the audio the audio experience it doesn't matter what's behind you it doesn't matter you know what you're doing with your hands none of that matters but if you're on video you know you've got to think about a whole nother dimension and so is it worth broadening your audience and also creating more more of that work for yourself maybe it is uh, th that's that's something to think about i would say that if you're on the fence about even doing a podcast start simple start with just doing a podcast audio only and you know do do some of those see if you can continue it see if you like the process of recording and editing and marketing your podcast and if you're into that process and you're passionate about it then think about expanding to video how do i remove a podcast channel i'm interested only interested in a specific episode but the podcast remains on my list that depends on the app you're using but usually they'll have uh, they'll have uh, whatever the settings option is for each individual podcast. They'll have an option to remove that podcast. So on uh, Podcast Addict, which is a phone app, um, there's usually there's three little dots on each podcast. I tap that and I just click remove that or unsubscribe, um, or and then remove whatever the episode. It, it automatically will remove and delete the episode. So it's on Podcast Addict. The term is unsubscribe. So that. Mileage may vary on other apps, but generally speaking, that that would be how to do it. Lawrence, you may have experience with other with other podcast platforms. Um, like on on Apple Podcasts, there, there's usually like um a, a delete function, um, like a, a red uh, subtract a button uh, that you can use to to just remove it from the list. Um, it it if all else fails, just just uh, just Google how to remove podcasts from whatever app and there should be instructions. Mm -hmm. Have either of you created a podcast? If so, what experience or wisdom can you pass along? I haven't, I just consume podcasts, but uh, Oleg? So I've been on podcasts, I've been interviewed on podcasts, um, which is not the same as producing it. <laughs> the guy just showed up and talked, but I will say this, and I because I have produced uh, media stuff, not necessarily in serial form, but I have done video editing and I do video editing. You know, we're, we're this is a send, this is like a podcast where we do every Thursday at 11 o'clock. We're producing live, we're just doing it live. You know, we're producing live content, recording it, and then I go and edit the video and we post it on YouTube um, on a session on a weekly basis. So this is very similar. Um, what I will say is it takes more time than what you would expect. So if you rec if you're recording, if you think that making a podcast is just a matter of recording something, no, the editing sometimes takes three or more times the time it takes to you know to actually record the thing. So if you have a thirty minute podcast, it might take you an hour and a half to edit it afterward. So that's one thing. Another thing is marketing is very difficult. If your podcast is not about something really specific where you already have a community, you already have a niche, it's very difficult to get listeners for your podcast because there's so many out there. And if you're an unknown person, if you're, you know, if you have no, you know, kind of already a platform of supporters built up, then, you know, it's, it sometimes takes years. I was just listening to a podcast, actually. Um, it was the podcast of uh, Joanna Penn, who's a, a popular independent author and you know she has a huge platform now and she has had she has a podcast and she was saying you know it took really five years for her podcast to take off and she was recording regular podcasts for five years you know getting some nibbles and bites and getting some audience interaction and some listeners but to really make something in the podcast it took years so are you able to stick with it for that long to you know perhaps make it something no these two aspects that editing takes a really long time or takes you know longer than most people expect and that marketing is challenging these aren't meant to dissuade somebody from starting a podcast i would say that the that many podcasts that i've listened to and i've had some, have some friends who have podcasts and i've listened to other podcasts over the years and it's 
fantastic to see people's development as they record their podcast. They learn how to do it better. So the interviews get more interesting. They develop a stronger sense of being, you know, on the microphone. And so another, maybe something to pass along is that you may not be amazing at it in the beginning, but if you keep at it and deliver and listen to your own voice and deliberately look at what you're doing, you're going to get better. And, you know, that's maybe part of uh, Joanne Penn's five years where in the beginning, she wasn't that good at it, but as she got better, she got more listeners, you know, her skills translated into an audience. So I would say, yeah, I start small and then, and then build up, you know, don't, don't make it so complicated in the beginning. Don't get, you know, $500 worth of equipment in the beginning, you know, start with a simple cheap mic and your, and your phone or your computer and learn as you go. I think those, that's probably, that's probably a good, you know, kind of a few good things to start with. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, 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 and I always think, I, I think it's great that people want to start podcasts. Uh, I, I encourage it. I may not be the one to listen to it, but, but I think that it's, it's worthwhile. I think it's a good experience, even if you don't have a lot of listeners. Okay. Uh, will listening to a podcast consume a lot of batteries on an iPhone? I noticed Pandora does not. So I'm wondering how about podcasts? Um, I feel like it won't. Um, so if you listen to a podcast on your phone, it's basically like streaming music. So it would have pr pretty much the exact same function. It'll just be using your data and it'll just be outputting um, audio. So it shouldn't um, drain the battery significantly more than Pandora. Or even better, if you just download the podcast to your phone and just play the audio file, that way it's not using the data. It's just outputting audio. Right. It uses it, it just it uses that that downloads it in one pop and then you're yeah, you're playing, you're done streaming. Oh, you know, so it's not doing as much work on a regular basis. Is the market oversaturated? Are podcasts played out? And if yes, what's next? A wise question. Uh, my my feeling is that that no, the market is not oversaturated, although it really depends on what your target audience is, what your niche is. So there's certain niches like, you know, personal development. There are thousands of podcasts of personal development. What will make yours stand out of those thousands? There are already popular players in that established, you know, in that established niche. You know, are you going to compete with Anthony Robbins? Are you going to compete with, you know, uh, Tim Ferriss? Are you going to compete with all of these people who have been doing this and building their platform for years and years and years? Probably not. You know, as somebody as somebody who's unknown, you probably won't. But if you're starting a turtle podcast, there may not be as many turtle podcasts out there. And there are a lot of turtle enthusiasts out there. So I, I almost want to look up what is it called to be a, like a turtle enthusiast. I'm sure there's a, there's a name for people who, who love turtles. Um, so in that in that situation, it probably isn't oversaturated. I mean, there, there's probably an opportunity um, for that. So it really depends on your target. And are podcasts as a whole played out? I, li I like that pun. Uh, I don't think so. I think podcasts, just like, you know, people listen to the radio. The radio has been around for a pretty long time. You know, people like to consume content. Saying consume content almost seems kind of like it diminishes what, what people are doing. They're not consuming it. People people like to enrich their lives by listening to audio, you know, stories, nonfiction. You try to learn something. So no, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think that there there are quite a lot of ways for people to listen to podcasts. And you know, if we're talking about like Lawrence and I. We both love podcasts. You know, I'm listening to podcasts all the time. When I'm washing the dishes, I'm listening to podcasts. When I'm cleaning up the house, I'm listening to podcasts. If I'm driving, I might be listening to music. I might be listening to a podcast. You know, I listen to audiobooks. You know, there's podcasts are a regular part of what I experience um, via audio. And now that people have cell phones, you know, cell, cell phone penetration is pretty much, you know, almost 100%, not, not 100%, but a lot of people have phones. And a lot of people have, so a lot of people have ways to listen to podcasts, you know, wherever they go. So, no, I don't think that podcasts are played out. Uh, but if we're thinking about what's next, 
That's a big question. I don't know, Lawrence, do you, first of all, do you have answers to is the market oversaturated or the podcast played out? Because I, I want to cover what's next, but but I want to give you also a chance to to give your piece on whether podcasts are played out. Well, um, I just feel like uh, since podcasts experienced a lot of growth uh, these past couple of years, especially during the pandemic, um, you know, it's just normal market forces where when something expands a lot, then, you know, there, there's different waves and they come and go in waves. So, you know, it might contract a bit, but then it might expand again. So it's just normal market forces. Um, that's pretty much it. I, I, I don't feel like podcasts are played out. Uh, I think they're pretty much here to stay at this mm -hmm. point. You know, there was there was a little bit of a little bit of little bit of time in the in the early uh, in the early uh, early two thousands. You know, two thousand ten, etc. You know, where there's their podcast really shot up and became a thing. And now I think they're just a regular part of the way people interact with audio content. Okay, so if I'm I'm going to say even if not yes, even if they're not played, what's next? I think there are a few things that are next. Um, and Lawrence, you mentioned you know, market forces. I think we're at the point now where there are established players in the podcast, in the overall, the greater podcast market. There's you know collectives and organizations, companies that create audio content. The, the traditional players in audio and radio, radio companies now have you know, a whole you know, stable of podcasts and pod and experienced podcast producers. So there's there's certain maturity there. But you know what's next? Well, if we I almost want to, you know, th everybody's throwing the AI out everywhere. And I think that to a certain extent there's going to be just like with written content, artificial intelligence is, is assisting in creating written content, you know, for better, or for worse, I think that's also going to happen to a certain extent in audio. There's already um, AI uh, based applications that can generate voice, you know, very convincing uh, voices. And so, you know, this, you could have coming up at some point, totally AI produced podcasts. And you know maybe we're a few years down the line, but I, actually even now I don't see that as such that's so far fetched. You know, are we going to want to listen to that? Maybe you know maybe there's going to there people the idea of a podcast will be to find a, a, the right market, you know, where there's space and create an AI produced podcast. Here's you know set the AI in motion. So you know I'm kind of. You're know, thinking about way a little something a little bit edgy and way down way down the line, but maybe it's not that much way down the line. But something a little closer to home would be, you know, we talked about like video live streaming. You know, in the past, that wasn't something that was very popular for podcasters. I mean, podcasters did audio, you know, it's very much like a radio show. But now a lot of the popular podcasters are also doing video. A lot of the popular podcasters are really expanding to different platforms and it's almost becoming a normal thing where you can expect popular podcasts to also have a video portion and also have you know like be selling merchandise and be doing all these other kind of ways to you know to make money to generate interest so i think that's that's going to continue happening and people who are producing podcasts are going to get even more creative about sharing um, you know the thing that they're very good at I don't know, did you have anything to add in terms of what's next? Um, you know, based on what you said, I definitely would back something with AI included. You know, it's ex exploding in such popularity right now. It's the buzzword right now. So it's the buzzword. Wouldn't surprise me if uh, if if it was involved in something down the line. I think the hype cycle for AI is still still sort of bubbling at the top and eventually it's going to you know hit the trough of disillusionment etc you know we're talking about the gartner hype cycle but uh for now you know for now it's the time to be excited about it yeah we're still in the early adopter phase yep so although i don't know people a lot of people are using chat gpt so by the way we're going to on april 20th we're going to have a program this is was a, a kind of a shameless blog although it's not shameless at all because i do not feel ashamed of promoting the things that we're going to be doing so on april 20th we're actually going to have a program called explore artificial intelligence 
where we're going to be showing you the different applications of AI that you know anybody can try. Um, and if you're interested in AI, I just posted the information in the chat eight, Thursday, April 20th. You know, register for that now. You know, that's that's out there and available. You know, if you're curious about how what it might look to produce a podcast um, using only AI, there are a few of the tools that we're going to be demonstrating can be part of that workflow. Oh, I feel like you can do a whole podcast on just that one question. And is the market oversaturated? If, if a few of these questions are really good, they're they're just really drawing it in. Okay, what's the magic number to get a sponsor's attention? Um, so it's uh, it depends. Um, but I would say if you want to do a good comparison, you want to take a look at specific podcasts and take a look at their subscriber numbers and see what their sponsors are. And then that way you can get a good baseline on, you know, the numbers a uh, podcast requires for that, for those particular sponsors to become a sponsor of that podcast. Yeah, it depends on the field. It depends on the, the specific genre, the podcast, the specific uh, target audience. The turtle podcast, the magic number might be smaller than the, you know, than the personal development podcast. I, I, I keep saying the turtle podcast. I'm, I bet there's a turtle podcast out there. I bet there is one like um, the million listener turtle podcast, and I just don't know about it. And somebody's going to email me later going, you, but you missed out on turtles. Wow. The turtles, the turtle podcast. Um, why are you keep picking on the turtle podcast? Um, there might be a whole, the whole community of turtle podcasters out there, but I would feel like that would be better as a live, like a video stream. Cause you see people can see the turtles. All right. Uh, where can we get the sponsor directory from? Uh, you mentioned that offhand, Lawrence, earlier. Um, is there a sponsor directory? Is that something that that one could find out there? Um, so, like, there are some ad marketplaces. Um, so, let me post a link. Um, it's um, it's an article about how to get podcast sponsors, and that might help. Uh, help out whoever is interested. All right. Um, is it difficult to edit when you are a novice using computers? We answer a lot of questions with it depends. Yeah. Because I think it does. Um, I think it depends on both your own skill and also on the app's interface. So there's two, at least two factors at work there. Some apps are easier to use than others in terms of editing. Yeah, so it is possible to edit if you're a novice to computers. It's possible. It depends on how complex you want your show to be. Do you want a lot of sound effects? Do you, you know, are you going to be doing a lot of audio mixing? Um, that's, you know, if you're just starting at something really basic, then no, it doesn't have to be that difficult. Um, did you cover where to get music for background and transitions in the podcast? We didn't cover that. But I hear YouTube has a very nice uh, music library that you can use for free. I don't know if that's specific to just using it on YouTube, but you know, we've used it for some of our videos that we've created for the library. I'm sure there are, there are other websites that will give you sort of almost like stock music. And one one tip uh, is there are websites like Fiverr where where people with really deep voices will record like an intro for you or create a jingle for you for you know five or ten dollars. You know the quality will vary, but it's only five dollars. So you know, if you want somebody, if you have a, if you're not, you know, you don't have the the deep resonant voice that you want for your for the intro to your podcast, you can pay somebody five dollars to just record whatever script that you write, and they, you know, that'll, you know, it's very inexpensive and pretty pretty low risk. Will the recording of this program be uh, shared later? Yes. So as with all of our digital literacy programs, we're recording it and we'll post it on our YouTube channel next week. And if you're registered for this program, which everybody who's here is, um, you'll get a follow-up email with um, the slides from this program and a, a link to the recording of this show, this show, <laughs> this podcast. 
this, this live cast. I don't know. Mm-hmm. This, this class. Now I'm getting, we're talking about podcasts. I'm getting confused. How do you find subscriber numbers for a podcast? Um, so they should be included um, on each podcast information page um, on uh, on whatever platform you're using. Some platforms will have that on there and some platforms, but I think like Apple Music, I think those those do. I think it does have it on there. And they also, you yeah. know, they have the top list. So you can, um, you can, I don't know if it's just the top 100 or you can scroll down and keep, keep looking at, at the subscriber numbers. So you can see like the 5,000th most popular podcast on Apple Music or the 100,000th. Are you taking a look, Lawrence? Uh, yeah. Um, so on on Apple Podcasts, um, they they have that number like right next to, um, right next to the genre on the information page. So yeah, it's 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 there on on some uh, platforms. Okay. So I don't see any questions. I mean, we we're gonna hang out a little bit longer for in case you have the last minute question that you want to frantically type into the chat. Because oftentimes we do the outro for our programs. Well, I'll be in the middle and like, oh, a question just came in. And then we'll stop and answer that question. So I'll give you a few minutes to put in uh, questions. But you know, we ran out of questions. I just I do want to say, and I've said it already, if you want to start a podcast, you know, do it, do it. Um, have fun. You know, if it's not fun, stop and, you know, no harm, no foul. And if you're interested in listening to podcasts, this, originally this was just about discovering podcasts, you know, like listening to podcasts. Um, there's there's just so much out there. Whatever your interest is, there is a podcast for that interest. And somebody mentioned in the chat that there are, uh, there are many turtle podcasts, and I'm very pleased to hear that. Uh, Lawrence said he would add a link for sponsors. I think you, Lawrence... Lawrence put in a royalty audio for you. Yeah, Lawrence uh, did link in it from buzzsprout.com um, to get ways to find sponsors. Um, so there is there is a link in the chat and we'll put, we'll put that in the follow-up email as well. Okay, well, thank you very much, Lawrence. Um, for the folks out there, if you have a moment, please do fill out our post-event survey. And we really appreciate you offering your opinions on the way we're doing, if we can improve, if there are topics you want to hear about in the future, um, that is very much appreciated. This survey is very short. So if you have a chance to fill that out, do share with us how you feel about the event. And thank you. Thank you for spending the time with us. Thank you for asking wonderful questions. We'll see you next week.